at least in the West, because of the broadcast of uh, bin Laden and the uh, Al-Qaeda tapes. My question is, first of all, why has he chosen exclusively to deal with only Al Jazeera? Secondly, how do you get those tapes? And thirdly, why do you keep uh, broadcasting what is essentially the same message? After right. all, Kyle there's Kyle nothing new in his, okay. in his tapes. Kyle Krupp, well, uh, how do you get the tapes? Well, they are sent send over basically to Al Jazeera offices everywhere and correspondence. I have, I am, well, I, I have they, no how contact. Are they with, with I mean, how are they delivered? With Bin Laden, I am based in London myself, so I have you, no contact so with you, them. You've never asked. I you've never, never asked, asked myself. You're not curious about how your own station I'm not gets curious. Well, I'm not curious. I have asked that question before well, of Al Jazeera reporters, well, I mean, and they wouldn't easy. tell this me is, before either. Is, I tell, I tell you what, this is very technical because Al Arabiya used to have them, the CNN used to have them, so many, so many stations in the field, they have so many copies of them. So it's something technical, person to person. I don't know, I don't have the, know the techniques, but this is not the question. The question that I like in you, that you have put is why Al Jazeera keeps repeating them. First of all, they repeat them over one day, yes, and they, they edit them uh, vigorously and they select the news item in them. I can assure you that very heavy editorial uh, policy is now applied to all these tapes. They select the news item, what kind of message. Uh, Bin Laden is offering a truce. Bin Laden is saying, uh, claiming responsibility over some, I don't know, criminal action or whatever. They broadcast only the news element in it. Do I ever refuse to broadcast the tapes? Yes, they did. And for your information, the tape that they refused to broadcast was broadcasted by the CNN. All right, Mona El Tahawi, you want to come in? Here? Khaled, I saw no context yesterday at all when I turned on the television and I saw Jill Carroll sobbing in front of, the, of, of a, a, a camera forced to wear a headscarf. I saw no context in that. And it was an awful message to send out. And for me, as an Arab and a Muslim, it's a terrible thing to watch. And it just gives this platform, as we've all said, that is completely unnecessary. The damage was done many years ago. Even if Al Jazeera has changed its editorial policy now, it has become so intertwined in many people's minds as being the platform for bin Laden that whatever editorial policy it passes now is almost irrelevant because you turn on the television, you see Zawahiri, you see bin Laden, it becomes bin Laden's station. It serves no purpose whatsoever. I think the woman was right. They say the same message again and again. Now what? Somebody at the back there. What is, what is your position on these tapes? Well, I just have a comment. Why the a, um, a limitation of expression, uh, freedom of expression when uh, the Danish and the Norwegian uh, newspaper published the cartoons and when Al Jazeera publishes these uh, Bin Laden videos, it's the uh, sensationalism and the, uh, you know, uh, of it. All right, you, think, me, they're like the, you, you, think, you think they're the same things. Mona El Tahawi. I, I completely disagree with you. You're talking about a newspaper that was published in a country of less than six million people. Every, as my colleagues here on, on, for the motion mentioned, 50 million people watch Al Jazeera. Well, what good does it do to show them the same message of hate? Essentially hate, again the and again, completely yeah. without context. Well, there, there are about 12 million people in Sweden and the newspaper that was read by people in the entire Scandinavia. I'm originally from, well, I, I'm a Swedish citizen. And uh, the point is, what good does it do to publish a picture, a caricature picture of the Prophet, the symbol of Islam, having a, a bomb on top of his head? Isn't that the a connection between that religion and terrorism in, in a time where we need to be more responsible with well, what we uh, you publish? Know, you know where I agree with you in, in yeah. that comparing them? In that by showing those tapes of Bin Laden and Zawahri mm -hmm. and the kidnappers saying Allahu Akbar while they, as they behead someone, it confirms that awful message of the Prophet with a bomb on his turban. Because I agree it has with you linked. on that. I agree with so, you on that. So, there you go then. I agree with you on you that. You have linked Islam with violence. I agree with you on that. I agree we need with context you. for that. It's okay. a terrible okay. damage. My point, my point was that there are lessons that need to be taught from both sides. All right, let Mark Lynch have a comment here. I just, just I want to respond to Mona's point that you've made several times about there being no cons. I didn't see TV yesterday. I was in transit. But um, w every time that I've seen uh, Zawahiri bin Laden tapes, I see endless discussion of them. And in a sense, it becomes fodder for discussion and for debate and critique. And I, to me, that seems like a healthy thing. If these ideas are bad ideas, as I believe that they are, talk about them, expose them, and that is what the media can do. If you don't talk about them, it doesn't make them go away. All right, let's take a question. Gentleman from the fourth row, you, sir. I would just like to ask, the Arab audience isn't the same as the Western audience. Therefore, how can the West teach Arab journalism? And the West doesn't have the same knowledge of local culture. culture. Ab Abdallah Schleifer, well, would you like to comment all, on that? The teaching is primarily uh, 
a technical idea that journalism means going out into the field and reporting, trying to be as close to the truth, closer to the truth, in fact, is, um, that's an Arabia slogan. But I mean, try to get as close to the truth as you can. And if that involves, and if there's a debate going on in that story out in the field, to, to show both sides of the debate. And that has nothing to do with local conditions. That's a fundamental idea of reporting what is happening out there. And that's been the great triumph of Al Jazeera and Arabia and NBC, which started all this uh, field reporting. And that's what we taught at the Adam Center. And we taught our students are all Arab, and they've gone on to be great stars Co in Arab television, College including Al Jazeera. Yeah, exactly. Now, this is, we are talking about the core of the motion. What kind of lessons, Abdullah, if, if uh, Western media taught Americans and, and, and the British the following, answering the question, who occupied the occupied territories? Plain, simple question. You have 43% of the Americans said it's the Palestinians. The Palestinians occupy the occupied territories in the West Bank. What is the nationality of the settlers in the West Bank? You have 38 of the British saying Palestinians. This is the outcome. This is the outcome of this misinforming media. And you want us to, to learn lessons from this. If you want to tell you me had 80% of, of your audience if, in a recent if, poll, an electronic poll, 80% of your audience thought it was quite legitimate to kill Western hostages. This is a different story. No, I am telling you about thing. the misinformation. It's the same thing. No, no. If you want to tell me that in, the any misinformation. Given, in any given city, there are a lot of fools walking around, I will agree with you. Well, Look, my wife is a... 43%. Count. My 40, wife is... Half of the population in the West think Palestinians occupy... Uh, Israeli my, land. My, my wife is a Sudanese. She gets in a taxi in Jordan and the driver says, these people in Darfur, they're Jews, aren't they? You know, Khaled, I mean, Khaled is we're a dealing significant with, number of people in the me West who thought they saw problem. Elvis Presley last year. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. But you, no, no, it, it means a lot. It means a lot. It means that every single people, every single individual in the West knows about everything about Britney Spears or, or David Beckham. They don't know the sufferings that their governments are doing against other peoples and countries beyond their borders. If you go this to is the, worrying. If, what kind right. of lesson if do you, you go, go to the educated elite? Look, I saw more stories about the terrible things that the Israelis were doing during Oslo, you know, expanding the settlements, stealing the water, stealing the land. I saw more stories about that in the Haaretz, English, than I did in the Arab press in Egypt, because at that time, Egypt had very good relations with Israel. So right. not a single Egyptian journalist went to the occupied territories to report on the occupation, whereas the Western press did go and did report on the occupation. Uh, Mona, as did Mona al very briefly. Khaled, uh, your argument about lack of knowledge of Palestinian issues, I could make equally regarding an Arab audience, because the only way Palestine is reported in the Arab world is purely political. Arabs have very little to no knowledge at all no, no, no. of Palestinian is local issues. Wait, wait, wait. This local is too much. Let's say Khaled, point. we do not cover Palestine in the Arab world as a human issue. We cover it as a political issue. And while politics are important, we don't know the day-to-day -day lives of Palestinians beyond checkpoints. There are lives. And as a small example, just before I moved to Jerusalem to be a correspondent for Reuters there, I had Egyptians ask me, there are Palestinians inside Israel who have Israeli nationality, i.e. the Israeli Arabs, the Palestinians of 48. They knew nothing. They didn't know there were Palestinians inside Israel. Where is the knowledge in the Arab world? So you think Western media is informing the public there and telling them that... No, I'm saying the Arab media does just as a bad the, job. The, the, the Zionist settlers are Palestinians in Palestine. No, I'm telling you the Arab media does not do a much better job. And why are we not informing the I West? I agree on that Where part. is our education I agree, of the West? I agree on the wrongdoings of the Arab media. But what I am telling you, the Western media is not the source to have lessons. This is my point. This has, is my point. Has the Arab world I told the West you. anything about Palestine or the Arab world? We lessons. failed. All right. We've come to the point in the proceedings, ladies and gentlemen, where we're going to vote on the motion. This House believes that the Arab media need no lessons in journalism from the West. Would you please take your voting devices? If you want to vote for the motion, will you press button one, the yellow button? If you want to vote against, will you press button two, the red button? And will you just do it once now? You don't need to keep on pressing. Votes should be coming up now on the screen behind me. We have 68.3% against the motion, 31.7% for the motion. The motion has been decidedly rejected. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it just remains for me to thank our distinguished panelists for coming tonight, to thank you, the audience, for coming.
We'll be back again next month with another edition of the Doha Debates. Until then, do have a safe journey home. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Thank you very much indeed. Bye.